Uh, Neil McDonald here. We're doing our daily lives here on LinkedIn, noon to 1230. Um, yeah, no, I get it, guys. I know a bunch of you are going to come in late at the minute telling me my audio was off, but I think it's on now. So um, give me give me some thumbs up or a message there and let me know that you can hear me. Now sound great. Thanks, Jim. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Neil McDonald. I run the GovCon Chamber of Commerce. It's a nonprofit organization with a vision to help small businesses get 50% of the federal dollars that are out there. There's this uh, SBA or government generated target of 23%. But I say, why aren't we going for 50%? And we don't mean in the chamber that we want to change laws and policies or whatever. What we want to do is to teach small businesses the process for success. And so we push on that. Um, and uh, if you don't know my background, I spent 20 years as a government contractor owning my own small businesses in spaces that are similar to you. And um, I have a lot of experience in sales, business development, capture, proposal writing that lead to money and government contracting. And that's the purpose of these events. Today is going to be successful cold calling. And we'll get to that in one second. But I want to just ask you, uh, thank you for all the sound checks on there. Um, but do me a favor in the chat, throw also your company name and your uh, core competency. It lets me see who's in there and, and see your core competency. An example is yesterday, I think somebody attended the live and they were doing cyber. I was like, hey, do you do this kind of cyber? And they came back and said, yeah, we absolutely do. We do it on this contract. Well, I had somebody else asking me, you know, hey, Neil, do you know anybody who does digital forensics? And I don't know what that is, but this person said they do it. I was able to put people together. It took me two seconds. And hopefully these two companies have a new relationship that they can build on, if not on that one opportunity, certainly on future opportunities. So that's why I like seeing what you guys do um, in there. Anyways, okay, so we're going to get started. Um, you see, by the way, on my tagline here underneath my uh, profile, I put the website there. And the reason I do that is because as you're listening to me, uh, um, jump over really quick and download the small business directory. It's got over a thousand names of people you can call in the government. Uh, and so download that. It does two things. One is it gives you a lot of information. Two, it has you join the GovCon chamber. It allows us to communicate to you through email on uh, different activities we're doing, et cetera. So let's get started on today's topic. I'm just going to uh, switch back and forth on slides. And, and if you haven't been here before, I tend to look around a little bit. So right down here is where I can see LinkedIn Live on my iPhone. Over there, when you see me looking this way, I'm looking at chat. So as I bounce around. Um, but anyway, so let's get started. Um, so I talk about successful cold calls, right? That's the title of today's live session that I'm trying to teach. The first thing I want you to understand is what I mean when I say successful, because that word's not just casually thrown there before cold calling. What I mean is the difference between successful and good. So I might have a meeting with John at a federal agency. It's great. We talk to each other. We hang up promising to talk again. Well, you know, that's a good call. It's nice. Everybody was nice to each other, but it's not successful. A successful call moves the sale forward. Uh, I'll give you an example of a successful call um, with a small business specialist. Uh, they'll, they, they refer you to a program office, right? Um, a successful call with a contracting officer, they might give you um, the specifics on when an RFI is going to drop, an RFP is going to drop, things like that. They might help you get access to a past uh, PWS that you can't find online. Um, and then one last example on a successful call is if I call a small business or a large business and I'm having some teaming type conversations, a successful activity that comes out of that would be, hey, we put in place an NDA. And I'll talk more about that. Um, but think to yourself that you want to have successful um, calls out there. So, okay, let me, um, the, the next thing I wanted to mention is uh, what cold calling is, right? A lot of us might not quite understand what a cold call is. And we think about it from a, you know, transactional sale type thing. I've been doing this a long time. So I've, I've sold vacuum cleaners door to door and I've sold billion dollar uh, government opportunities where you're trying to do capture in there. Cold calling just means you're calling somebody you haven't called before. If I have called John and talked to John, the next call is not going to be cold. It's not going to be um, uh, uh, new to me and I'm not going to have anxiety around it because John and I have already talked. We've established the beginnings of a relationship. Cold calling is the beginning of building a relationship with people. So getting into that is kind of the big thing. One last thing I wanted to mention about um, cold calling as it relates to context is if you've watched other videos I've done, 
um, and Gus, this is a good one to share with folks, is if you've watched previous videos I've done where I talk about the uh, procurement life cycle or uh, the acquisition roadmap in a federal agency, I talk about RFP stage, the RFI stage, and shifting to the left pre-RFI. Well, cold calls are what are needed in order to do that uh, business development activity in the pre-RFI stage. That's not capture. When it's pre-RFI, you're almost doing business development, uh, unless you have a specific opportunity. But either way, when you pick up the phone, you're shifting to the left. If you're just responding to an RFI or responding to an RFP, you're not um, shifting to the left. You're really just, it's, um, I know I, I'm going to say something controversial here, but it's not even really sales to me. It's more order processing. They ask for something, you're giving them something. Sales is where you're having to help them understand a problem, turn that problem into a big problem, and then begin to talk about the solution. Then you talk about a proposal. So that's a whole whole course I teach on sales is separate, but I want you to understand when you pick up the phone, you are doing the activity to shift to the left. Um, so when you're talking to different people and you're, you're going in on cold calling, um, one of the things I want you to keep in mind as I talk about some of the uh, reasons on what holds you back, um, there's a great line out there that says, no one cares what you know until they know how much you care. Stephen Covey said it in a different way where he said, um, in, in his book, Seven Habits for Highly Effective People, seek first to understand, then to be understood. And just so I beat this, <laughs> this topic down even lower, we have two ears and one mouth that God gave us. We're supposed to listen twice as much and talk than we talk, right? And so all of this is around when we do cold calling, it's not about pitching our product. Uh, people who, who receive cold calls, and I get that from like healthcare providers who call me up at at night trying to sell me the net, the latest HMO or HBO or whatever they are. And they don't care about me at all. They're just boom, spitting out what they do. In our business, in your business, you you want to understand the problem. And, and keeping that in mind will help you have a good um, uh, cold call as we go forward. So I'm going to talk about that in a second. So the um, we all have different reasons for what holds us back from um, doing cold calls. And fundamentally, they can come down to uh, two areas, I think. One is fear and anxiety. And the other is um, what I call constructive procrastination. These, these reasons, oh, we need to do this stuff, paralysis analysis. So maybe it's not total fear, but we're doing everything else. And, and so think about these reasons or these top challenges for cold calling and and, to, and actually tell me in chat, if you feel like it, which ones resonate with you and which ones you might be feeling. But the top challenges for cold calling that people run into are you just hate making calls, you just hate picking up the phone. I, I would rather do anything. Um, I'm a people person. I like to go to events and see people but picking up the phone. It's hard to do it. Uh, a lot of people um, might have seen this recently in the past couple of years where they hate the whole virtual relationships. Well, cold calling is a virtual relationship. You're picking up a phone, you're starting. Um, another top challenge that people face is they never know what to say, right? And, and we're going to talk about that. Third one might be that, um, and this goes into analysis paralysis, or more importantly, constructive procrastination. It's good stuff, but you're still procrastinating from doing the cold call, which is what you really need to do. And uh, that means you'll find anything to do instead of making calls. If you're the person making the calls, um, it's important to see that in yourself. If you're a person responsible for people to make the calls in your company, you need to recognize that, recognize that challenge. Um, a quick way to uh, overcome that, by the way, is just make those calls by nine o'clock. If you didn't make it by nine, you're not going to make it today. And to help somebody understand that if you'll do anything else other than make the calls, then make the calls the very first thing you do. Um, people will spend a lot of time res researching. This is the analysis by paralysis. I am completely opposed to researching a meeting with John, researching John, researching that agency uh, beyond knowing that John and the agency are, are uh, likely the ones I want to talk to. I will not research them until I have a committed uh, call scheduled. And then I will research in preparation, which I'll talk about in a minute as a tip for how to overcome some of these challenges. But when you see yourself spending a lot of time researching, you know you're delaying. Um, the, this is a big one here is you've had a bad experience uh, calling somebody before uh, you reach in the like my favorite and no offense to 
no offense to anybody when I say something. I'm just sharing my experience. But my absolute favorite is when I call a small business specialist who says, that's not my job. I, I don't have time to talk with you. I'm like, what are you talking about? Your whole job is to liaison between industry and the buyer, the program office. Um, you're not supposed to advocate for small businesses. You're supposed to find the best deals for, uh, uh, for the government to solve the mission. I get that. But you kind of are the point of contact. I mean, if I look on the website, it says, hey, call the small business specialist. Well, you might have had an experience like that. Flip it on the other side. The government might have called one of us and got a horrible experience. Um, there's a line in sales that I learned a long time ago, knocking doors. Uh, some will, some won't, so what? Some people will be ecstatic to, to meet you. Some people will be okay to meet you. And some people, you know, it'll, it'll feel like, uh, it's the worst thing I ever did was calling you. Doesn't matter. You're going to have that experience, but I get it. Bad experiences prevent us from talking to somebody else. Um, another reason or another challenge uh, we face sometimes is just this. Uh, we wish there was an easier way. I wish I could automate the calls. Uh, maybe I could shoot a bunch of emails and see if people will come. We're looking for easier ways, but there is no easier way to do a cold call than to just make it happen. Um, you can certainly take advantage of what email and social media can provide as a, as a way to get in, but you're still going to have to do that first call, that, that initial call. And so there is no easier way, but there are things you can do to make it easier. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, another huge challenge is fear of rejection. Uh, you know, as a boy, I had that leaning against a wall in high school and at a local dance or something, a high school dance. I had it there. I had it when I was selling vacuum cleaners door to door. Every single time I knocked on a door, I had this fear or this anxiety of how that person on the other side would react to me knocking on their door. It's like, what are you doing here? Plus, I had the added fear of dogs or something. So you don't have that yourself, the dog part, but you still have that fear and anxiety that might be there, um, this fear of rejection. And so I, uh, I know what that's like. I have decades of experience doing sales, and I still have a level of, of uh fear of rejection, right? It, the difference between you and me maybe is that I just dive right into that fear because I've dove into it before and I've realized it doesn't kill me. It doesn't bite. Um, when I was in the army and the Rangers, we used to jump out of airplanes and somebody asked once, it's like, are you, are you ever afraid to jump? I'm like, I'm afraid every time. It doesn't mean I won't do it, but I'm jumping out of a really safe airplane into a massive amount of wind, hoping my chute opens up. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid. It's, it's not like I'm not going to do it. Um, and we used to say if we were around people who were not afraid to jump out of an airplane, we just let them go a full second before us or something. And it's the same thing here. There's nothing wrong with you having fear of rejection. It's letting that fear paralyze you uh, is the part you want to uh, work on. Don't work on the fear, work on the paralysis. And again, I'll give you some tips on how do you do that. Um, and the last tip I'll give you or last um, point I'll make about uh, cold call challenges that you may be facing is that um, you're doing cold calls and you just feel like I'm not having any success with them. Uh, look, I'm not afraid to pick up the phone. I pick it up and I, and I call people, but I'm not having that um, impact or I'm not getting the results I expect. I, I want to get straight to the program office. I want to do whatever. Um, if you're not having success, but you're okay picking up the phone, then again, it comes back to there's probably something you can do to refine your process that'll make um, success begin to happen. So, so let's move on and talk about that. And, and some of the things you can do. And, and remember what I'm sharing here is just a component of a broader cold calling uh, course I do. And, and, um, I, and I've done uh, full out webinars on this topic. I've done 30 day challenges. So I recognize that if you can get past cold calling, then you can be uh, begin to start building and, and developing relationships that'll last and lead to federal dollars. And so that's why I push so hard on get good at cold calling or get comfortable with cold calling. Um, okay. So what can you do about uh, your, your anxieties, your fears, or, uh, um, or the lack of success that you would expect out of your efforts? What are some of the things you can do? Um, I only want to give you one because you're in here in a fast live. And, and, and I believe the one I'm going to give you is the most impactful thing you can do to cold calling. So coming back to um, all these challenges, let's take the fear. All of these can be minimized. I can't reduce your fear and anxiety, right? Or I can't get rid of it, but I can reduce your fear and anxiety um, and I can increase your chances for success by uh, giving you proper preparation. And, and what I'm recommending that you do on the very next meeting you have, that's a cold call meeting, a new person. Uh, and, and in fact, 
by the way, you can practice this on the very next meeting you have, even if it's with somebody you know, but this will work um, in the cold call area is call planning. I have something called a call plan sheet that I give out um, to my customers. And so I have a template I'm willing to share with you. If you're watching this video, just write in the chat at some point uh, after you hear me describing, if you want me to send you my template, um, write in the chat, hey, send me the call plan template. That way, uh, by the way, don't say send me the template or send me that thing you're talking about because three days from now, I'll forget what I said. But if I see you saying, send me the call plan template, I'll, um, I'll remember and get it to you. Um, so let me tell you what a call plan template is. There's a lot of components on it to help me prepare for a call, right? And the more prepared I am, the more confident I am going into the call that I won't look like an idiot, that I um, won't be unprepared, that I um, will know what to say to have success. And so there's four components of the call plan I want to share with you in the next couple of minutes. The first part is um, objectives. And so I describe objectives as something you will get out. I said this in the beginning on a successful or a good call, right? An objective is what you're trying to get out of this meeting. If you go into any sales meeting, and any meeting you have related to a federal government opportunity is a sales meeting. You might have a meeting with uh, teaming partners or with an agency contracting officer, small business specialist, or a program office. All of those are sales meetings. Um, and it does it's not like a, a car sale where you're expecting to close the deal the exact same day. Sales in the federal government just take months, right? So you've got time. You're incrementally moving it forward. So you need to determine what's your objective for this next meeting that you're going to have. An example with a small business teaming partner, like I said earlier, is an NDA. So an objective you might write down is, I want to get an NDA. Uh, I want them to agree to do an NDA. It, um, in the conversation, you can decide, do I sign yours or you sign mine? That's immaterial. Your objective is to get an NDA uh, in place. And I don't mean you're getting in place, you're getting a commitment for it to go forward. That's a really good objective. Um, and a, a, uh, an objective, if I reach out to a government program office, is I want them uh, to agree to a follow-on meeting that allows that I can talk to their direct reports or colleagues about whatever we're talking about. If we can agree to a follow-on meeting, then that's perfect. Um, those are good objectives. Those are different than the second thing I'll tell you about, which is the purpose of a meeting. So the purpose of a meeting with that same program office, let's say, is um, my purpose is to you know, introduce my company briefly, but really I want to talk about some of the challenges you have around data analytics. Let's use that example, right? The reason I say this is that you want to have a purpose that you can share with that person. Hey, can we agree that in the next 30 minutes that our purpose is this? Our purpose today is cold calling in the... Um, federal agencies, right? To discuss cold calling and how to get around it. My personal objective is for uh, many of you to be so interested in the topic and see what I'm saying that you want to download my template or you want me to send it to you, um, just an email or something, but you want me to send you that template because then I know I'm reaching you, right? That's an objective here. It's not a sales call, but my objective with the, um, uh, the government program office is the meeting with the colleagues. My purpose this is what I communicate to them is I want to talk with you about data analytics. I do not share the objective, but I share the purpose and I drive towards that objective. Um, so let me know in the chat if that's not making me uh, make it sense. And I can expand on that in a little bit. Um, so you got objectives, you got purpose. The next thing, and this is one of my favorite for getting past your fears of making cold calls, things like that. And, and by the way, let me pause for a second. I don't expect you to be making 50 calls a day. I don't think that's actually necessary. In the federal space, you want to be making strategic cold calls. If I was selling, um, let's say I was selling vacuum cleaners by phone, I would be calling 100 people minimum a day because I'm just trying to get people who've got a dirty floor and want to hear about a vacuum cleaner and I, boom, I sell it, right? But you are, you're doing a lot more. So you're digging into an agency and you're really digging into um, a particular command or, or a program office that buys what you buy. So more you're, you're constantly doing discovery and problem development with them. So here you're looking for you know, two or three meetings a day. So you might call five or 10 people to set that up. Um, so when you're making calls, the, the third part I wanna tell you about is an icebreaker. So I have people fill out on the call plan template an icebreaker. And the reason I say this is two reasons. One is you don't wanna start a meeting with somebody for 30 minutes or even an hour and waste time in the beginning talking about whatever. 
you know, uh, the worst thing I think people talk about is whatever's behind me or, you know, hey, Neil, I see you fish or golf or whatever. <laughs> and they start talking. That is old school sales advice. And it is um, it's not helpful advice. A good icebreaker, say you were cold calling me, a good icebreaker would be, hey, Neil, I was actually listening to some of your podcasts. But, by the way, and say you want to talk to me about cold calling. I was listening to some of your um, podcasts and I listened to that one on cold calling. I thought it was excellent. And I and I um, really appreciated that dialogue you had with your guest or whatever, right? That's Then I'm like, oh, thanks. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, that was a really good thing. We were diving into cold calling. Well, that's perfect because that's the purpose of my call today is to talk to you about cold calling. I want to learn how to get better at it or whatever. Um, do you see that idea of have an icebreaker that is related to the person you're calling from a professional uh, standpoint and even more specifically from a professional standpoint related to the topic or the purpose of your call? If you do that right from the beginning, you're you're getting them warmed up to you because you took the time to have a um, have an icebreaker, which clearly communicates that you researched them and you did your homework. But it also is a um, uh, a chance to have a transition right out of the icebreaker and right into uh, the topic of your choice. And so really quickly using that data analytics example with John, the program office, I would go find something John did online. If I can't find anything related to him, I would find something related to his agency that is describing uh, data analytics. An example is, let's say John's in the military. I would say, hey, you know, I was reading um, DOD's new strategic plan on data that's come out and they talk about treating data as a strategic asset. Um, what do you guys think about that down at your command? Or, you know, are you guys circulating that down there? Whatever it is, I'm, I'm instantly trying to get the dialogue into that. So objectives, purpose, and icebreaker. The last thing I want to uh, point out about the call plan, and I can send the call plan, and I see you guys asking, so uh, absolutely get that over uh, to you. The, the last one is um, questions. I, and I'm sorry, I can't remember. I can't remember if I did this yesterday or, or earlier, but I did one on spin selling on how I develop questions when I go into meetings. And so Gus will find a, a link and drop it into the chat here. And Gus is my colleague in the GovCon chamber, by the way, Gus Phelps, so say hi. Um, but anyways, in there, I talk about how to shape questions. But on the call plan, you want to write down five or 10 uh, questions. Some of those questions can be just uh, basic situational questions factual questions you couldn't find the answer anywhere else. Um, for example, forecasts are sometimes hard to find even though you think they're online. So you can ask a question like that or a question like, do you guys have a strategic plan that I can get and review to do more homework? That's a situational question, just purely factual yes or no type thing. And then, but the questions you want on here for the first call, cold call, are problem questions. And in that previous video, I described how you wanna write some problem questions that are related to what you sell because when you're asking questions, what you're really trying to do, you're not trying to learn about an opportunity yet. Opportunities, if they relate to what you do and you're talking to somebody, they'll come up naturally in the conversation. They'll be like, you know what? We're working on this thing um, and, and they'll get to it. What you wanna do is to ask questions that begin to help them uncover the problems they have. And um, this, this purpose of this live session is not to go too deep into that, but. Um, so when you have a call plan prepared with objectives, you have your target for the call purpose, you know what you're going to talk about and you get them to agree to it. And then an icebreaker, which gets you started, which gets, you know, lowers your fears a little bit and helps you prepare. And then questions. And I tell people, I got like seven questions here. I'm going to try to talk about in the next um, half hour with you. Is that okay? Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, most people are nice. Let's leave out the ones who aren't right. Most people are nice. So if you're prepared, you begin to reduce your fear and you begin to um, enable yourself to achieve more success. So that's the um, quick tip on successful cold calling today. I want to look over and chat really quick. If you have any questions that I um, that I can answer in the next few minutes, let me know about that. Uh, and I'll, I'll either answer them right now in the next uh, five minutes or I'll get to them after. Um, and so let me look in here. Those of you who said send you the call plan template, absolutely, I'll, I'll definitely do that. Um, if you uh, found value in what I just shared today, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up on either LinkedIn if you're live or YouTube or the podcast if you're watching or listening. Um, yes, you definitely have a copy of the cold plan or the call plan. It's my favorite thing. Um, looks like copies, call plan. Every, uh, yes to everybody. Uh, tactical equipment, communication, SATCOM. Uh, 
Uh, so Nasir, I was just reading your thing. You should reach out to David Waltz. Uh, look at yesterday's thing. He's in the comments. He's with um, the Navy and he's looking for folks. I don't know if yours fits right in there. Um, custom screaming, or screaming, screening. <laughs> Sorry about that, Maurice. Uh, just look at thanks for people putting the comments about what you do. That's great. Um, I'm looking down for questions. Uh, definitely get the call plan. So it looks like we're good, and I and I always want to respect your time. I wanted to give you a couple of quick reminders. Um, one is we've got another session tomorrow, and <laughs> unfortunately, uh, I can't remember what it is exactly. So I'll get to it, or maybe Gus, you can drop that topic into the uh, uh, into the chat here. What's tomorrow's topic? Because we already have it lined up. Um, I I do want to let you know that on April fifth, there's a uh, webinar that I'm putting on that is about starting and building relationships that'll lead to federal revenue. Obviously that is something that's interesting to you. So go to the govconchamber.com website, click on the link and sign up uh, today so you can get in there. Um, I wanna make sure you're getting access to all this information. I think we're good here. I just got uh, people asking for the call plan. So you definitely can get access to the call plan. I hope you have a great day. And remember government contracting, it's not a secret. It's just a process. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.